Well, one of my favorite guests is Lori Ditto. Why? Because she had an encounter in heaven and an encounter in hell. And the encounter she had in hell changed her from uh, a, an average church-going Christian, backslidden, to someone that was sold out 100%, and it's like a transformation of day and night. Uh, and, and, and the book, The Hell Conspiracy, it has that effect. In other words, making Jesus Lord or doing what the Bible says, making Jesus uh, Savior and Lord. In other words, everyone makes him Savior that's a believer, but and that's debatable, by the way, but the Bible says Savior and Lord. But the encounter you had in hell, just some of it is being, uh, you saw, actually, you told me you saw a timeline for the future, all the way to the return of Jesus. And you told me before we went on the air that we are very close to his return based on the timeline you saw. But what you had to tell me, I want to do what Pat Robertson did in his uh, autobiography. I want to shout it from the rooftops because people have to know. But you had a, a you just had a visitation from Jesus, and he showed you something you had seen in the timeline when you visited heaven and hell. Uh, and tell take me back uh, just a month or so ago. Right. What? What happened in this visitation? Thank you. Thank you, Sid. So um, it was the morning time. I was putting on my makeup. So looking in a mirror, putting on my makeup. And I felt the presence of the Lord come into the room, overpowering me. And um, there was uh, a healthy fear of the Lord. And then suddenly I felt the heart of the father for the 60 million plus babies that had been aborted. And it was a flash. I don't even know how to say how quickly it was, maybe a nanosecond. But in that, in that amount of time, the amount of pain, overwhelming, overpowering pain that Jesus was feeling, I, um, it, it was short circuiting me. It was it was uh, unplugging me. In fact, it ended really quickly. Thank you, Jesus. And then the next one started where I felt immediately this overwhelming sense of the wrath of God towards this sin of killing innocent babies. When you and, say overwhelming, do you mean beyond anything you ever felt before? Because you felt a lot of things when you had the visitation to heaven and the visitation to hell. Is yes, this beyond? Thank you. you know, Sid, it was, I, 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 I never thought I could uh, explain the fear and the overwhelming pain that I felt for the wrath of God for my sins, as I explained in the book. But this was that that would have looked like cotton candy compared to this overwhelming wrath that God has for the murder of innocent babies. So the two were not really in comparison, although I never thought I'd be able to explain the amount of wrath that God had towards me for my individual sins. This, there is no comparison. So, you know, it, I, when it stopped, I, I, I was touching myself because I, I thought I had evaporated or something. I don't know how, how, how you could handle that much pain or that much sorrow. Un, I mean, it was unbelievable. The sorrow and the pain and the, and the wrath, more, so, so much more than anger. It was so much more than just what you think God might be angry. No, this was, this was a boiling point and, and something had changed. He knows exactly how many babies have been murdered. Jesus knows. So, you know, so are, many... we, are we approaching, uh, in other words, it's almost, I've heard an analogy of the sins are in a bucket. And when they get to a certain point, 
right. uh, that's when judgment occurs. Are we, right, that would be a, where are we at that now? With that abortion? would be an excellent, excellent way to explain it. And what, why ever, why ever, however many babies have been aborted, we, we, we've turned the corner. There is, mm-hmm. there is way too many babies, 60 million plus. And, and as I said, he knows exactly how many. And so this overwhelming uh, pain and anger was right there. And, and that was the beginning of the visitation. And as it, as it stopped, I was shocked that I was still alive. Having felt both of those, I was shocked that I was still alive. And that's when the Lord showed me the timeline so when I first, the very first time, first vision, when the Lord took me to heaven before I left, he gave me my identity. He put his head, his forehead to my forehead, and he downloaded this timeline of amazing and terrible things that were going to happen. And nothing seemed real scary in the presence of Jesus because you knew he was in control. And so Every time that the Lord tries to teach me something or, or, or to get me to move in obedience to something I'm supposed to do, when it's important, he shows me this timeline. And so he pulled out a section of that timeline and began explaining it. Um, at that time, I felt I was in a white room or in, in an area of fog. I could not see the mirror anymore. I couldn't see anything. I just knew that I was in a teaching time for the Lord and I was inside uh, panicking that Lord help me remember everything that it is that you're saying that I'll be able to do what it is that you're asking me to do with the knowledge that you're giving me right now. Well, tell tell me step by step what he said to you or the knowledge he gave you. Thank you. It started out with an understanding of how God has tried repeatedly to plumb line his church, plumb line humanity back to himself with uh, I had understanding of Adam and Eve and the pride that was in their own eyes. You know, I had understanding of Cain and Abel and then the tower of Babel through the judges, the prophets, the Kings uh, with Jesus Christ trying to plumb line humanity back to our God. Um, Fast forward to Martin Luther. What was Martin Luther trying to do? And then great men like Wesley and Finney, they were all we were always trying to plumb line us back to our God because Jesus is coming back for a pure and spotless bride. And what we got to get is that now is that time to make sure that you are clean, that you are aligned with God, that you are obedient to him. And if you're not that pure and spotless bride, then you're not on Jesus team. And so, you know, all of that was overwhelming. I really feel I sensed that he has this issue. And if we will not align with him, the same as plumb lining, uh, purifying us back to him, if we will not, I felt that it was as, as in the times of Moses with the heart of Pharaoh, that if we will not obey Jesus Christ in this, that, that we will be like Pharaoh. This is like step one. I mean, maybe we've already passed many steps and, and, and uh, finally uh, I'm Let me see if I understand you. This country, humans, have committed many major sins. Yes, sir. But what I hear you saying is at this moment, the thing that is about ready to release the judgment of God is the sin of murdering the innocent babies in the womb. And that's absolutely what I'm saying. Yes, that's absolutely what I'm saying. If we do not hear him and understand the depth of his heart on this issue, if we cannot side with Jesus Christ in the understanding of life, that only God creates people in his image, if, if we don't do something about it, and we're in trouble. And I understood right now, Sid, I had a choice. You can be silent or you can move and use your voice. And silence is, is saying that you are against Jesus. If you refuse to say anything, if you think, well, I'm just going to sit this one out, that's not available. That is not an option. You don't get to sit this out because he's asking for something. He's asking for all of us 
to join him with protecting and saving babies. I also understood that Satan is uh, on a on a rage to try and take out the last generation, the baby of the family, which would be the, the last generation, to try and take it out. And so we as Christians must do everything, everything that we can do. You know, you know and, every Christian recognizes it's a horrible sin, but right. we've heard it so much and it's so many doing it. An entire political party, the Democratic Party, is for right. murdering babies in the womb. Um, uh, that we're almost numb. I hate to say this. We're almost numb over that issue. And you're saying, God is saying, stop that. It's time to take action. Absolutely. And, you know, as Christians, politics sits underneath Christianity. The kingdom of God is above. Politics sit below. They're not separated. Our life, you don't you don't stop being a stop being a Christian when you go to vote. Christians vote. And that was something that the Lord really impressed upon me that he wanted me to do. He said, I want a protest. And he showed me what one would look like. And um, I've never organized a protest but, before. But you, told, you told me uh, there was another uh, adjective before the word protest, a peaceful protest. Mm -hmm. Right. So I am organizing a peaceful Christian protest to call the city to repent. To repent of your sins, uh, but this is, in are, your, this is in your city, Kansas yes. City. When is it? This is October 10, Saturday, October 10 at 10 a.m. We're going to meet down at City Hall, and uh, we're going to do a silent siege walk around City Hall for the 60 plus million babies that have already been aborted. And we're going to cry out. We're going to humble ourselves and pray and seek God's face and repent of our sin and ask God to heal this land and to cause believers to take their rightful place as the leaders of, of our city. The leaders, the church needs to, the church needs to be able to know what to do. And right now, God has given us something to do. And the idea that um, people could vote for a position instead of a policy is is not correct. Jesus is asking us for a right. personality instead of a policy. Right. We, we have to we, we have to vote for the party that is willing to save the babies. And in case there's any. Uh, miscommunication of what it is that I'm saying. Now, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ first, and I pray about how should I vote. And right now, there is, there is, there is something that he wants, and we need to vote for the party that is protecting the babies, and that's the Republican Party. All right, but what about the, what about the person watching us right now that says, tell you the truth, I'm sick of polit politicians, period, I'm not going to vote for either one. What would you say? Right. I would, I would tell them that your silence, your silence is against the Lord Jesus Christ. Your silence does not put all your eggs in Jesus' basket. By voting for protecting the babies, you are voting with Jesus. By staying silent, he, he holds us accountable for what we say, but he holds us accountable for what we don't say. And that will, that would, for me, be disobedience because the Lord is asking us to move on behalf of something that's on his heart right now. And if you choose silence, I am really afraid for you because if you choose silence, what you're saying is what the Lord wants does not matter. If you choose silence, what you're saying, then you're hardening your heart. And I would not want to be like Pharaoh having such a hard heart because in the end, you are 
you're choosing to be separated from God. You are choosing to go to hell. And if you could see that it's only the enemy putting these kinds of blinders on you, I would tell you, if you think you can be silent, then you need to get some prayer people around you and start praying for you that the scales would fall off your eyes. I would suggest that you get people around you praying for you, that you would know the heart of God. Because once you feel, understand that God is so upset both in pain and in wrath, if you knew that, then you would side with the Lord. If you call Jesus Savior, then you need to do what it is that he's asking us to do. And silence is not an option. You said (laughs) that God gave you, no, that's exactly what I wanted to hear from you. Uh, But tell me, this is very important. The Lord gave you a strategy for every city in America. Yes. Well, first of all, why why are you using the word protest? Well, you know, that's the word that he gave me. He said, I want a protest. And a so uh, protest. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, he said protest. And um, I went to my board, Operation Save Kansas City's board, and I sat down with uh, with the men on this board, and I explained to them what God wanted. And right away, they felt that it is God. They felt this is God. And then then they worked with me, you know, protest. Christians obey the rules. And so protest has such a negative connotation to it, because right now, the only types of protests are the ones where people are setting police cars on fire or or trying to beat up and hurt the policemen and deface property. That's what's in the mind of of America right now, this is what a protest is. But Martin Luther protest protested, and a whole Protestant uh, belief system emerged from that. And we need to protest because I believe in this protest we will plumb line people back to Jesus Christ, and we need to plumb line sin and the number one sin that God had highlighted right now. And I'm not saying that all sin isn't sin. I'm just saying the one that right now he's asking us all to focus on this one sin is the murder of innocent babies. Abortion is murder. And so I saw signs when he showed me the vision. Um, He showed me a, a clip of what the protest would look like. And I saw signs saying that um, abortion is murder. And so my, back to my board, they asked me, can we call it a worship? No, we cannot. Can we call it a mar- you know, just a march? No, this is a protest because that's what God asked. And if we're going to do it, I know I need to stick to what it is that he said. And as I explained to this board, this is what God wants. All of the people on the board, we are 100% in agreement. Let's give Jesus what it is that he wants. And someday, Sid, we will be so proud that we gave Jesus what he wanted. I have no idea what it will feel like to know that we did something beyond what we're used to, beyond what we're capable of. But, you know, as this thing has come together, the Holy Spirit has walked us through step by step. Well, but, but, when I, but, Laurie, this is very important, what I'm going to ask you now. God gave you a strategy to do a web page so that it would be easier for someone watching us right now that yes. would like it done in their city. Explain what he showed you and what you yes. have. Available. So as, we, as, as I was looking at all the signs, the understanding in, in, that, in that clip, that vision came to me. It's not about your logo. It's not about your name. So yes, plan Kansas City. But then I want you to take all of these signs and all of the banners and everything. And I want it able to go from city to city. And so on the website, there is, there's a button called uh, protest. And underneath protest, there are three drop downs. The first one is for Kansas City. If you want to register to be at the Kansas City a protest, you can do that there. And then there's the sign sheet, sign up sheet. But the third drop down actually gives instructions for any city, any pastor, any evangelist, any teacher. If you're a prophet, if you're if you're a successful businessman that you can hear God's heart on changing your city, call your city to repent. 
and let your city know, let the believers, let the conservative people know you cannot be silent. You must align with Jesus on this. So on that page, we've put how we did it, how many people you'll need, what each position is. I give you the PDF form and the Word document so that you can automatically use it. Just go ahead and use it. Um, I tell you where I've ordered all the things that we've ordered. So since all of that's been figured out for any, any Christian who believes that they want to put on a protest in your city, everything is set for you. And I also want to say, Sid, that, you know, it's an evangelist that's really good at calling people to repentance. And um, the protest in Kansas City is stacked. We will have 10 evangelists calling out to Kansas City to repent. And if a city needs an evangelist to come, they can just get a hold of me and we can send an evangelist, you know, send an evangelist to help because the church, we must align and the hour is short. It's not too late. We need to provide uh, Jesus with what it is that he's asking us to do. And I think that warriors are stepping forward. They, I think we know we need to do something. We just don't know what to do. So I want to, I want to alleviate that problem. If you believe that Jesus Christ is asking us to move in this minute, we need to protest. Uh, the name of the Kansas City protest is called Repent. And really, that's what people need to do. You are not safe. If you think that aborting a baby, murdering a baby is okay, you are not safe. And I would question you because I don't believe in once saved, always saved. I believe that you can you can slip in all of your sal- in all of from your salvation and all of your sin, and you need to know that siding with the enemy, it's the enemy, it's the principality of death who has convinced many, many people to uh, to side with something that's called choice. No, we obey. The Christians obey. It's not about my choice. I chose you, Jesus. Now we obey and the Lord wants us to stop this onslaught. I really feel that if we do not make this push right now, And it's not too late. There's plenty of time. If we do not stop this onslaught right now, we have no idea the amount of death that Satan is going to usher in. God have mercy on us. Sid, God have mercy on us that we that we hear him and we obey quickly. Amen. Well, I have to tell you what God, you know, prophets see in part and prophesy in part. I have seen that America isn't finished, that America's greatest days are ahead of itself. Amen. And, and um, I, I mean, what I have seen is beyond anything I could think or imagine. The coming glory is going to literally save cities. Uh, I think some, some of the cities that, that are called anarchist zones, uh, the whole city is going to have a revival. But if we do something at this moment, it can shift what the devil plans for evil, for God to do the good that he's called on us to do. I believe there are people watching right now that says, well, let someone else do it. It might be you. Would you pray over everyone that is watching right now, that uh, they would they would hear from God and be obedient, and it would not hurt to talk to uh, a few of the lukewarm Christians because I know what Revelation says. I'd rather you be hot or cold, uh, but if you're lukewarm, I Jesus will vomit you out of my mouth. You don't hear that preached much in pulpits. Lori, pray as God instructs you. Thank you. Oh, Father, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Holy Spirit, I love you. And God, we need you right now. Our nation needs you in Jesus' name. I know my life needs you, my family, my neighborhood, my city. 
God, our nation needs you. And right now, Lord, we lift the name of Jesus Christ high so that all men can come to you before it's too late. Jesus, thank you that you've given us uh, marching orders. You've told us what to do. And so, Lord, we agree. We agree. We want to be obedient. So right now, help us. Lord, I bless the protest that's going to happen in Kansas City. I ask God that you have as many people at that protest agreeing to leave sin and step into full obedience, God. That's what we desire. We want to be fully obedient. We want holiness. And God, I ask for that for the cities around this great nation, this nation, God, that that we are one nation under God. And so I ask God for the cities all around the nation, have mercy on us. Lord, prick someone's heart. Raise up a prophet. Raise up a warrior. Raise up a businessman who says that we will protest in our city, Lord, so that we can call the city to repentance. Have mercy, God. Lord, I want to pray right now for my brothers and sisters that, God, you'd come and you'd speak to them. There is no middle ground. It's not which side are you on, Lord. You are the only side. You stand above politics. And any party that wants to murder a baby is not hearing your voice. And so I ask right now, God, awaken us, shake us, put your revival spirit in us. I pray, God, for the ones who are being complacent. Now is not the time to be complacent. Father, visit, visit us, visit anyone who is complacent, Jesus. Give them the word. Give them, God, show them the sword that is your mouth. Help us, God. Help our hearts be obedient. And for anyone listening that you are in a backslidden state of not following Jesus, I I pray you would repent. Repent. There are four things that you need to repent. First, you must agree with God that sin is sin and abortion is murder. You must agree with Jesus. Second, you must have godly sorrow. If you don't have godly sorrow for this sin, then I question you, are you really, really aligned with Jesus Christ or have you created a false religion? Third, you must confess your sin so that you can be fervently healed. And four, God will give you something to do to put you on the path of righteousness. And so I bless you. If you're backslidden right now, you must repent. You must align with Jesus Christ. The or else is unthinkable that you, you would be playing close to the gates of hell. Lord Jesus, help us. Help us storm the gates of hell right now that we would take back what it is that most precious ones. Help us talk. Let this be the issue that we cannot vote for abortion. We cannot side with a party that would allow babies of, of any, any age, God, to be, to be murdered. Forgive us, Jesus. We ask for your empowerment. And right now, God, I want to bless the protests all across the city. That cities, God, cities would repent and be saved. And that we will humble ourselves. We'll pray. We'll seek your face. We'll leave our sins so that you may heal this great nation. We come asking you would heal this great nation, Jesus. We love you. We pledge allegiance to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Uh, I want to remind everyone, and this this is very important. Uh, go to Operation Save Kansas City, SaveKC.org. That's Operation Save KC dot O-R-G. Isn't it amazing? I don't think it's a coincidence. Uh, that we're about ready to uh, nominate the swing vote for the abortion issue, for the 
challenges this country is going to have in the future. And for the president of the United States, there are only two candidates. And I might add all the lower offices, everyone that's running. You're either for God or against him. You're either for murdering babies in the womb or or against murdering babies in the womb. Yes, there's other major sins. But at this moment, Lori Ditto has heard from the heart of the Father that this is the swing vote for the election, for the Supreme Court, and for you. Who knows if you have not been called to the kingdom for such a time as this?